What's up, y'all? It's your girl saying, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I want to start a new segment on here called Let's Address the Comments. Basically, what I'm going to be doing uh, throughout the week, I'm going to be going through all the comments. I'm going to pick out a few that I want to interact with. And the very first video of every Monday, I'm just going to be talking to you guys. It could be good. It could be bad. It could be middle ground. Doesn't matter what it is. I just figure this is a good way for me to interact more with you guys while I'm on here because I do appreciate everything you guys do. And then there's just some times where comments are just so long. And personally, I don't like writing super long comments back. So I feel like this is a good way where we all could just communicate and learn with one another. So let's go ahead and get into the first comment. All right. So the first comment comes from a short that I put up from, I believe this is the Ron Wyatt video about the Red Sea uh, crossing. So the comment states, doesn't it seem weird to you that he found so much stuff? Also, his proofs are just like finding something that supposedly has been there for thousands of years with no actual evidence coming from scientists. He always just said things like, one of the scientists told me, okay. Then we need to talk to the supposed scientist. He's not reliable when it comes to archeological finds. He makes vague remarks thinking he found yet another biblical find while not providing any real solid evidence. Okay, so basically this was a comment left on, like I said, it was a short. So this is a 20 something second clip taken from probably like a 20 minute video. You guys know I do some pretty long reaction videos when I'm like really into it. So, I, I, my guy or girl, because I don't know who left this, I don't know if you actually watched the video that I was reacting to. But um, because we watched him find Noah's Ark, we watched him explain the Red Sea crossing, and he also found stuff from Sodom and Gomorrah. So at least in the, what was it? I think it was the one where he found Noah's Ark. He did have scientists come through at some point after the fact, and they did their own analysis of it and they did the carbon dating on the wood that was found there and they came to the same conclusion that he came to about about Noah's Ark being there with Sodom and Gomorrah he found the sulfur balls that we saw in that one video and not only did he find it his kids went out there and found it and then other content creators we saw their footage they all went out there and found the same thing and even brought some one guy brought a few back with him where he burns it in front of people at the house and the few people that have tested it, that were scientists, they claim it's like nothing they've ever seen anywhere else on earth. Magma and lava like included in that. So if that's how you feel, I mean, I don't know if you're religious or not, but if you think he's making it up, that's just what you think. I, I mean, I can't change your mind. If him finding all of this doesn't change your mind, uh, the scientists showing that they also took stuff to the labs, broke it down. If none of that changes your mind, it never will. Like it's, it's okay. Like I, I get it. I used to be an unbeliever too. And there were things where I'm just like, well, that doesn't make sense to me, but it's cool. It's just not meant for you to get right now. Maybe one day you will see it how I see it, but if not, no biggie. Thanks for watching the video. Second comment comes from the video where David Lynn confronts I Show Speed, asking him, are you a Christian? And the person asked me, are you a Christian? <laughs> um, I'm just gonna assume you didn't watch the video because if you did, you would find out within the first minute that I am indeed a Christian. You know what's so funny about that video? I actually got a lot of um, comments from Speed's fans about how it was wrong of the, the street preacher, David Lynn, to go at Speed the way he went at him. Also, probably some very more liberal Christians, a few of them came in there too saying it was wrong how David Lind went at him. Uh, but then I also had like other Christians who kind of like saw things how I saw it and how David Lind saw it. So I'm not too pressed about how anybody feels about that. I also knew Speed's fans would see that and just be like, oh, how dare that happen? Oh. But um, I think one comment I did get in there, somebody mentioned that Speed didn't want to talk about that because he was converting to Islam. And I think I recently saw a video clip where that happened. So that's where Speed is at now. So he wasn't really Christian to begin with. And as he's becoming of age and he's finding his way in this world, 
he thinks Islam is the way to go. So I can't say if he's doing the correct thing or not. All I know is that, I think I've said this in another video, when we are young and we try to figure out life and religion on our own, sometimes we test things out or read things to see if it works for us. So if he believes uh, Islam will work for him, then more power to him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's not my job to convert him. If it's meant for him to be Christian, it's going to happen whenever it happens. But we, we just, we just got to let the seeds be planted and wait to see what happens. My, my fellow Christian brothers and sisters, we, we just got to wait and see how it plays out. But he's young, so... Who knows? Third comment. It comes from my video where I was talking about Jason David Frank recently passing away and, you know, how much I loved his character, which was the Green and White Rangers, and how much of an impact that had on my life. The comment states, It would have been cool if during his judgment, God told him that he made it into eternity with him. And God bestowed upon Jason the white robe of the saints and made him the White Ranger forever and eternity. Ooh! You know how cold that would be? That would be the dopest thing ever as a Power Rangers fan, okay? Um, now, we know how he passed. So, if you are religious, we know that's probably not going to happen. That's probably not going to happen. However, as a fan, I like to look at things in a positive light, despite knowing what I know on the religious side of things. So I do think that was a cool comment and I do think that would be really cool if that ever did happen. Cause I'm just, look, I'm saying, if he making it to heaven and I get up there, as soon as I see him, I'm gonna be like, my boy Tommy Oliver was good. You show me how to do the Utsia and all that. Woo, he's got a lot of moves. I wanna know how to do all this. <laughs> I told y'all I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan and like I said in the video, I'm happy I did get to meet him the few times that I did before he did pass. So I got really lucky. I got really lucky choosing uh, the profession that I chose to jump into, which allowed me to be at all these conventions. So I got to just keep seeing him and talking to him. Real cool dude. I did pray for his family when I found that out. And um, I'm going to keep, you know, I just hope I just hope his family's okay, considering what happened. All right, next comment. Somebody went all the way back in my video archive and they found the video where I titled it, I've decided to become a Christian. In that video, there's a part where I talk about um, where I was hesitant on becoming Christian because somebody who is Christian at that point in time told me that the spiritual activity was going to start ramping up the more I gave my life over to God and stayed on that side. And in the video, I basically said this. Now, the people that I follow that are Christian, they said the deeper and heavier you get into your faith, you're gonna be tested and deal with stuff like that. And I'm not gonna lie, that threw me off. I have a wild active imagination despite my age. And I'm home alone most of the week. So I'm not trying to dive into this. A part of me really don't want to dive into this right now. Then some spooky stuff happens. And I just be like, nope, I'm good. Because that's just what it is. Like, I already be hearing weird noises around my house when I be alone. This is the comment that I received. It says, when Satan sees that he is losing another soul to God, the demonic activity might get stronger in your life because he would try to prevent that from happening. And boy, have you never been more correct than that. When I tell y'all... um. So around the time I did become Christian, I never told y'all this. The day I decided to do it, it's like everything was perfectly lined up on timing, right? So the day I decided to become Christian, Young Don Reborn, as soon as I walked in the house, he put a video up stating that his Christian Discord server was live and he put the link up to join it. So I was like, okay, screw it. I joined, I was like the second or third person to actually join the server. Hopped in, he was in there. So as I hopped in and more people hopped in, we got to talk to him in the very beginning. And he stayed for like a couple hours too. While we were talking, he was like, Bible study starts tomorrow. And I was like, dang, I need a Bible. So I'm online looking on where to go. It's starting to get a little bit later. It's like now like about to hit seven in the evening at this point. So I was like, screw it. Let's see what Barnes and Nobles have. Barnes and Nobles ended up having what I use now. This is the King James Study Bible. And 
it was expensive. It was a little expensive. Um, <laughs> it was about sixty dollars. I put a pickup order in, and they had it ready within like thirty minutes. So around seven thirty, I left my house. I took that twenty minute drive to go to Barnes and Noble to pick it up before they closed, and I was set. I was like, okay, cool. I have a Bible. Um, I can now do Bible study tomorrow because now I have everything I need and I'm fully about to go in on being Christian. I left this Bible in my living room. This is my office. I left it in my living room on my uh, table. Like we have this little table on top of our ottoman. When I went to sleep that night, when I tell y'all, I heard, it was. It sounded like some people just materialized up in my house because trust me, I could hear people break into my house. Also, this was the summertime. One thing I do for safety, despite how hot it is, because I'm really good with heat, I close up and lock all the windows before I go to bed, right? Just to ensure that like if somebody, like I said, if somebody gonna get up in here, you're gonna have to work your way on getting up in here. I'm gonna hear everything. So it sounded like some people materialized in the living room. And all I heard, I heard a, a girl's voice. She was like, hey, do y'all see this? And then you heard a dude's voice. He was like, he was like, see what? And she was like, yo, did she get a Bible? And then you just hear like a group of people laughing in my living room. I never told y'all this. I told my boyfriend this and he was just kind of like, are you sure you just didn't hear the people outside maybe laughing and talking amongst each other? And I was like, nah, because the last time when I tell y'all when all the windows is closed up and locked up tight and then I put like little barriers around it and the blinds are closed and all that. Um, my neighbors, like a week or two prior to that, my neighbors had gotten to a fight with like another neighbor. It was weird. It was, it was late at night. Mind you, they are shouting at each other super loud. You could barely hear them through my windows. So mind you, these people are loud, arguing. They was ready to like throw fists with each other. You can barely hear them. Barely. Now he not home. He on the road in his truck. So he has no idea what it sounds like when people are arguing outside of our house. So in his mind, he just like, well, you would just hear people outside the house. No, that's not how that works. How I have everything here set up. You have to be extremely loud for me to barely hear you. So just random people talking at like regular noise level and laughing about it in my living room no no <laughs> miss me with all of it okay i already knew what that was whatever was happening whoever was coming in and out messing with me they saw that and laughed once that bible study started and i started praying and stuff every day that stopped and it didn't ramp up again until um halloween weekend Mind you, I don't watch horror movies. I don't do anything scary. I didn't trick or treat. I didn't do none of that. And I still, I had the roughest weekend. I'm telling y'all, it was horrible. It was horrible. But um, yeah, the, they weren't lying about that. You got to stay prayed up out here. It's, it's spiritual warfare for real out in these streets. Okay, it's serious. All right, this might be the last one I'm going to because I don't want this to be too long. But this is from the video I did, I think, early last week and it was about capturing christianity the comments i have received on that video have been very interesting i've received comments from catholics who liked my take on it apparently because i'm not catholic and i guess as me not being catholic but i actually had a positive take on cameron's situation other catholics that ran across it were cool with it right um I saw some people from my subs and the Catholics that came over. They was arguing back and forth about something. I don't know. I let them do that thing. As long as it didn't get super disrespectful where I got to like boot some people out of here. Y'all can talk back and forth all y'all want. Don't care. <laughs> I promise you, I don't care. But then something weird happened. I have multiple atheists come out of nowhere upset about Cameron asking for money. Uh, mind you... <laughs> I never asked if these people were atheists. They kind of just freely gave that information up. One, I thought that was weird because when I was an unbeliever, I didn't waste my time watching religious videos on YouTube and then getting mad at people in the religious videos. I would have never wasted my time doing that. That's why I think this is very weird that they all wasted their time watching this video about a Christian channel, talk about a Catholic channel. 
Yeah. So, um, I didn't get why they were over there for that. Also, what I don't get with everybody that came over here about that, saying he was begging for money, he was just doing the same thing he always has been doing. This whole time, he's always had a Patreon, and he's always had a one-time donation link because he runs a ministry. So, just like any other church, I don't see what's wrong with that. He was honest with his financial situation. He said they're running at a loss, and... If people would like to help them out so they can get out of the mess that they're in, um, he was like, this is the link to the Patreon. This is the link to the one-time donation. I even said in my video, I was like, hey, do this if, that, if that's what you want to do. And I had a lot of atheists very upset about that, and I don't know why. Like, nobody has a gun to your anybody's head about donating. If you don't want to donate, don't donate. If you do your research prior to, and it's not for you, it's, it's not for you, and that's okay like <laughs> i didn't see what the issue was i'm one of those people so back when i was an unbeliever my cousin said something that has stuck with me ever since right and this was years ago when i was not religious he gave um he had gave some money to a homeless woman outside of like the dollar store and i think he gave her like a 50 or something and i remember everybody was just kind of like hey yo why you give her that she a scammer she probably not even really homeless. And he was just like, hey, man, that's none of my business what she does with the money that I give to her. At the end of the day, God knows my heart. And he knows what I was intending to do when I gave her that money. Like, I was just trying to have her, like, a good couple days where she got food, water, whatever. If she chooses to blow that, that is on her. That has nothing to do with me. And I remember when he first said that, I was just like, nah, bro, you stupid. She probably a scammer. Because in that same city, there was literally a dude that lived on my aunt and uncle's street. And that was his full-time job, was being homeless. So, and I've, like, seen this man ever since I was a little kid. And I remember seeing him downtown, begging for money, pretending to be homeless. That's that was, like, literally his job. So, ever since I started as a kid, I just, when I would look at homeless people, I'd be like, no, nah, you all scammers. I put all of them in the same book. Which is wrong, because just because some are, don't mean all of them are. There's actual legit homeless people that need help. So, when all these people came in, downing Cameron and all this other stuff, it was weird, right? It's like, look, if you don't have just a generous heart to donate, whether it be him, you be at the grocery store and they be like, hey, do you want to donate your change to this random charity that none of us know about? If that's not you, that's not you which is fine, okay? I even had like a, a person who's atheist come in there and be like, well, I still think it's wrong that like he broke, but he going on a trip to Rome. It's like, look, he not paying for it. Some other Catholic YouTuber flying him out to the Vatican. You think he gonna say no? I wouldn't say no. I don't care what financial situation I'm in. I'm be like, ooh, you wanna fly me out the country Put me up for free and pay for everything and treat me like a bad bee? Run it. Do what you got to do, okay? You, you're you not going to make me feel bad about that because somebody else wants to front the bill for something I didn't ask for. Psst, miss me with it. Miss me with it, okay? All right, y'all. Due to time, that's all the comments I'm going to be able to go through uh, this episode. I hope you liked it. And as we go through this week, I'm going to just randomly pick some comments throughout the week and i'll see y'all again next monday 11 a.m est for episode two of let's address the comments so until next time you already know who it is it's saying uh -huh.